Hi guys, I am really excited to share with you this update for your home and I think you're really gonna like it. So we'll just do a quick zoom across the front and again we are showing the nine foot second floor being added on top of a now nine foot ground floor. So we are going to be doing the eight foot uh, wall height. The existing eight foot wall heights will be extended up to nine feet. But then all the new walls being added down on the ground floor will just be nine foot tall. Except again at the front entry here. So per our discussions, I've simplified the window design again. We are showing the new window design at the front lower bedroom here. The mudroom window is just a simple rectangular casement but to tie it in and uh, oh actually one thing that we uh, we also did was we narrowed up the front entry because we expanded the mudroom and the uh, pantry space down below so now the entry is a little bit narrower and to keep things proportional what happened is the closet here got uh, a little bit wider upstairs in the media room uh, but it's still a, a very handsome looking design but I did feel that we no longer had a really good balance with the windows here at the new second floor bedroom we need something on this wall and it really doesn't make sense to put any windows here so I thought it'd be nice to maybe do another bit of perhaps more legible address paneling or address design up on the second floor uh, you know to be honest with you um, I think most people would look here for an address but uh, I think when we're not looking at this in 3d pixelated I think it becomes very legible right here of course I still do love uh, this corner design a lot more I think that's great for mail delivery um, but you know maybe pizza delivery Something up high on the second wall will do. And again, it's all in a response to uh, tying this space together and occupying this wall space. Uh, and I think it's uh, I think it's pretty successful. But I, I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and feedback on it. The uh, window design throughout is also a little bit simpler, where we used to have three individual windows at the top rows. I'm now saying, well, let's just go uh, whole hog and just go full width with that uh, transom or clear story window up above. And uh, you'll see that that plays out really nicely on the other elevations as well. So let's cruise through the uh, side yard. No real changes here, except that I am perhaps going to propose that we do close off this existing sliding door down here. Um, because perhaps it's a better use of space to make this some additional uh, pantry storage. Uh, we'll see that on the inside. Of course, if we do close this off and make this wall a uh, solid, or make this door a solid wall, we would have to have uh, a swinging door to get to the backyard. And if we did, I think this is a great spot for the grill. So, of course, some of the bigger changes that we need to talk about are the changes to the back wall. So you saw a preview before of these changes, but there have been a couple of further revisions since we last met. So of course, I love, love the idea of incorporating the request for the round window here at the backyard where there's already this beautiful round pool uh, or these two circles for your pool. It, it's perfect to incorporate uh, a circle window here at your master bathroom, at this back wall, on its own up here. Uh, this window is operable. Now, there's different ways for this window to operate. This could be the pivot axis left to right, and the top could swing in and the bottom could swing out, or it could have a vertical spinning axis, and either side could go in or out. I think it makes much more sense to go this way and let the bottom of the window tilt out. Uh, that would be really nice for the tub space right here. But this isn't the only window 
bringing in natural light to your master bathroom. We've got this skylight, which brings light directly into the master bathroom and through the uh, frosted glass door here, connecting the master bathroom to the bedroom. I talked about the simple revision or the simplification for the central window or the, sorry, not the central window, but for the clear story window up above, it's now just one unit. And this really came in handy when I thought about how to get you more glass here uh, at the back window. So, uh, and you had talked about wanting some more glass, uh, bigger windows here at the living room. And I have a really interesting idea for that. And that is to let's maintain this same uh, kit of parts. We'll use these same windows here and set them up at an eight foot window height, uh, which will still leave a foot of space to the ceiling. But then we'll put another one of uh, these windows, just shorter, down below it to really bring your view of the outdoors all the way in. So when we come in through this space, we're seeing planters, just potted plants here, outside between the back of the built-in bench area and the wall here. And I think this does a really fantastic job of blending the indoors and the outdoors. And this is just a fixed piece of tempered glass. This isn't meant to be operable, uh, but this window would crank open. And because we're bringing the window all the way down to the ground here, or down to the floor inside, I thought it made more sense to bring the bench out far enough to make room for a few planters to go. I don't wanna say that we're just gonna fill this whole area in with dirt. I don't really like putting uh, dirt, even if it's a lined pit, properly lined, it just makes a lot more sense to put planters down here, in my opinion, and just uh, clean out the spaces every once in a while. And these can, of course, be on a drip irrigation system. I know adding um, more plants isn't necessarily something you're looking to do, but I think this is a relatively simple uh, solution to help bring in some vegetation into the inside and r directly across from the uh, narrower foyer space. Anyways, perhaps I rambled on there, but it's leading to uh, this other revision here at the dining room. So try as I might, I couldn't really find a way of keeping that existing window here and either moving it up and putting a transom below it or even pushing it all the way down to the floor and putting a transom above it, uh, it just didn't look right. The proportions of the window just don't really match what we're doing everywhere else. And so I do think it makes sense to uh, buy new windows here for the dining room too. I know it, it keeps creeping the scope, um, but let's take a step in here and see what it's like to be at this table uh, looking out on the cherry tree right out here. Uh, I think this is far more enhanced compared to what we had before, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, the window height was up at 80 inches, and the uh, sill, I believe, was at 33 inches. So maybe the sill was a little bit lower. But when we have this low window here, which, to be honest, maybe isn't perfectly necessary, but I do like the idea, especially since we're closing off the skylight, of just bringing in as much light as possible. And perhaps the argument could be made that the window here is just gonna be illuminating chair legs and whatever dropped Cheerios and things might be uh, hiding under the floor. So if we got rid of it, uh, the window that is, uh, I'm okay with that. I still think it's uh, it makes sense to raise the window up and go with another one of these units. Um, this can now just be a, a bit of a low wall trim to act as a chair rail. I think that would be quite all right. But uh, the more important change here, I think, is considering closing off this door here to incorporate some uh, really powerhouse storage here. Tall storage. Uh, it could be just an extension of the uh, low cabinets and upper cabinets if you want, but I do think this gives uh, a sort of a nice uh, bookend to the space here. So this is not articulated at all. I really want to get your input on the idea of closing this off for some more storage, but 
like I said, if we do close this off, I think we've got to make um, a patio door, a swinging patio door happen right here. And I'll be honest, another thing I like is that uh, this move, while still aligning uh, structurally here with what's happening at the second floor above, uh, we'll have a shear wall here. This stack, this shift in the dining room windows does seem to give, whoops, I need to move this over just a little bit more. Whatever, sixteenth of an inch. I don't know why I thought that was misaligned. It says it's aligned. Uh, we we can center the dining table on these windows here and still have room for a swinging patio door here to not interfere with um, someone sitting here at this at this chair. There's plenty of room for this door to swing open uh, without inter interfering with someone sitting here. So uh, let's see, before we uh, take a tour of the interior, which of course, uh, my caveat, it's not fully developed as I, uh, I've been saying. Well, let's go. There we go. Uh, before we do that, I do wanna take a look at the new covered patio, the uh, pergola out here in the backyard off uh, in the distant corner here. And I gotta say, I am really stoked with this updated version of the curved design. Um, I think this is fantastic. There's definitely more to develop and fine tune. This is by no means perfect, but we do have, uh, the curves are built in. They're a little bit more evident at the uh, roof deck than it is how the uh, beams remain straight but we're curving in plan this is quite messy but i do think it's doable luckily it's it could be all boxed in and uh, soffited in so we don't have to see the mess happening inside there but what i really like too is that while the whole thing curves in plan and radiates from this central point in the pool. We've got, everything's just made out of straight pieces. We're showing the uh, hanging chair here, the uh, propane tank fire pit but perhaps we can get some uh, natural gas to feed these infrared heaters above. The gas could be uh, piped up from one of the behind one of these posts. And at the uh, far end, a little bit of a hammock space hanging between the posts. And I, I think this is gangbusters. I think this is such a fun space to be in. And then the simple chevron pattern, the way that the uh, tongue and groove wood ceiling would lie over the joists here, I think is really, really fun. Especially when you're sitting in the, the, uh, the chair here and that chevron pattern just forces your, or draws your eye out and reinforces the concept of how the uh, whole structure slopes out and radiates around the pool. So the inside is not really fully developed, but just conceptually seeing how much mudroom space we have perhaps this new pantry space here. The living room is uh, still being developed, but this is the larger of the two fireplaces uh, that you said that you liked. 
I think it fits quite proportionally in the space and remains nicely visible from the kitchen as long as we're eye height. It does start to get cut off by the couch so maybe we want to start raising up the height of it but it's, it's relatively flexible. Uh, it can certainly go lower than what I'm showing here now but of course I like it being higher. I like being able to sit down on this element next to the fire. I think that's fantastic. The height at the entry is just a smidge taller. I mean, this is um, shrunk down a little bit in significance from what I was originally envisioning, but I still think the effect is there. You know, as you come further back, eventually you don't see the top of the window. All you see is the tree foliage beyond. And I, I think that's really special. On our way to the uh, garage, we have the mudroom. Looks like I might need to clean this up still a bit more. This window is meant to be centered between the powder room wall and the uh, locker room cabinetry on the other side. But we have a much wider uh, powder room here now. And the stairs are also pretty awesome. So there's a swinging panel here that would give you access to the area under the stairs, as well as um, the area that's underneath this inside corner of the mudroom. Perhaps we can talk more about that. But then the steps lead you up to the uh, second story area. Now, I've got this oversized couch in here, just in case you opt not to build in the seating. Uh, I think that's, that's another option you can go with. So to show that again, perhaps we don't do a built-in here. And instead, the space next to the desks could just be a space to stand. I love a potted plant in my house. I think that'd be a nice spot for it. Oh, I, I skipped over something important. Uh, the idea of pairing up that circle window in your master suite with this circle window or the circular skylight well that'd be visible while coming up the stairs. I like that a lot. Especially, again, when coming from your master suite with its with the master uh, bath having that circular window above the tub I love coming out of your suite here and this long hallway is nicely accentuated with a uh, skylight here at the end leading right into both bedrooms but the skylight here uh, at the end of this long hallway is, is kind of fun to be accented with this other round feature So the upstairs feels really good to me. Uh, a lot of development still needed. Uh, but uh, I think it's really fun. I do want to show off perhaps this idea again of having a window here at the office space. So when we come into uh, the media room, there's this little office alcove with that wider closet we talked about before. But I just kind of like the idea of sitting here um, and when you're, uh, you're doing work on your computer, you know, you've still got access to what's happening inside the second floor living room, just beyond this stairway area. So no one's ever going to be looking, well, I guess someone could stand here at the uh, guardrail and uh, look in on you while you're uh, doing your work, but I do think this is pretty awesome. And while it still leaves plenty of wall space to uh, display art. And then of course, while coming across the guardrail here to get into this front bedroom, I think it's kind of nice to be able to see through this, see through these windows. Again, not totally necessary. It can be omitted, but I think it'd be fantastic to have. 
And the uh, laundry room and bathroom in here are not uh, developed yet, but this would be uh, a very wide open space for a lot of laundry to happen. The uh, sinks would be right here, and there is a skylight that I still have to uh, design that would connect to that, but uh, I'm loving this space. I'm loving this house. So again, with this pantry idea out here, maybe a lot of uses that you were going to put in here remain outside. And this could really just be a more closed off door, uh, a door that usually stays closed and it really is just for overflow stuff, not for daily use. Isn't that just an awesome little structure in the backyard corner there? I'm stoked with that. I'm really happy too with the window design in here. And I do think it's worth putting this uh, window in. So just because uh, you know, I, I want this space to be bright, brightly lit. Well, guys, I do look forward to hearing your feedback on this latest design. And if everything looks good to you, I will get to work on the design review package necessary for your city to approve a second story of this size. Thank you so much, guys.